Louise Françoise Blanc de la Vallière is a member of the nobility who is terrible at magic, as her attempts usually result in an explosion. She is nicknamed Louise the Zero by her classmates due to her inability to use any of the four magic elements. In a magical world called Halkaginia at the Tristane Academy for Magicians, Louise de la Vallière heads to class on her first day as a second-year student. Her teacher asks her to perform a simple spell, to change pebbles into brass, though her peers mock her with the nickname Zero. As soon as she casts the spell, the room explodes. Despite being from a famous magician family, Louise has a 0% success rate casting spells. On the day of the familiar summoning ceremony, Kirk who summons a fire salamander. Gucci summons for Dandy, a large mole, but Louise summons a human being, Sato Hiraga, from Tokyo, Japan who cannot understand what Louise is saying. Louise is disappointed but cannot break the ritual's tradition, so she makes a contract with Sato by kissing him and runes appear on his left hand. Louise tries to shut him up by performing a silent spell which backfires and allows Sato to speak and understand Louise's language. Sato thinks he has been kidnapped until he sees the two moons in the sky and realizes he is in another world. Sato must now deal with being Louise's familiar and he is often whipped for being disobedient. In the morning, Sato dresses Louise before they go to breakfast where Sato only gets a piece of bread and meets a kind maid, Siesta. Unhappy with the arrogance of nobles, Sato mocks Gucci's two-timing nature so Gucci challenges him to a duel. Despite being severely beaten up by Gucci's summoned brass golem, Sato refuses to back down. Impressed, Gucci tosses him a sword to give him a chance. The runes etched on Sato's hand begin to glow the moment he touches the sword, enhancing his strength and speed and giving him sword skills, and he easily defeats Gucci. However, he soon collapses after the fight from fatigue. Mr. Colbert and the headmaster Osmond suspects Sato may be a legendary familiar. With his victory over Gucci, Sato has become popular among commoners and several nobles. Sesta and the commoners, who now call them Our Sword, secretly feed Sato as Louise is withholding food as his new punishment. He also learns why people call her Zero. To add to his troubles, Kirche, a noble from Germania, has chosen him as her next boyfriend. In a devious plan, she attempts to seduce him, although this fails when Louise finds out. After considering Sato's hidden talent with a sword, Louise drags him to town to buy him a sword. Kirky matches Louise's gift with a more impressive sword, which causes more conflict between Sato and Louise. Louise's sword later reveals itself to be the talking sword Durflinger. Osmond continues his harassment of his secretary Longville. Siesta is forced into the service of Count Mott to be his mistress. Disgusted by the lack of regard that nobles have for commoners, Sato tries his best to rescue her. They make a deal where Count Mott asks for a particular family heirloom book from a Germania family. Coincidentally, it is Kirch's family, which was summoned from another world. Sato asks Kirch for the book, but Kirky wants him to date her. After refusing her demand, Sato attempts to take on Count Mott with Kirch's expensive sword, but his runes do not activate as it is an ornamental sword not meant for combat, and he struggles to lift it. The Ways and the others arrive just in time to prevent Sato from being executed. Kirk agrees to give Count Mott the book in exchange for Sesta's freedom and forgiving Sato for his offense. Sato catches a glimpse of the heirloom book and is surprised to find that it is just an old porn magazine from Japan. After they return to the academy, Siesta kisses Sato on the cheek and thanks for his efforts. The exhibition of new familiars is a day away, and Louise is feeling rather depressed about it. Not only does Sato have nothing impressive to show, but this year the Princess of Tristang will be present, which makes the event more important. As night approaches, desperation sets in as Sato is unable to produce an act worthy of praise. A visitor to Louise's room turns out to be Princess Henrietta herself, and she explains how she and Louise are childhood friends. The next day, Sato performs a weak sword swinging demonstration only to be dragged off stage by Louise. They witness Foket the sculptor attempting to break into the school's treasure vault using an earth golem. Louise tries to stop her with her magic, but her blast misses the golem and hits the tower wall, breaching the magic barrier to the vault. Tabitha and her dragon familiar, Silphid, fly in to help but are too late to prevent Foket from stealing the fabled Staff of Destruction and making her escape. 
Worried that the princess may be blamed for Fouquet's theft, Louise volunteers to go and catch her. Kirch and Tabitha volunteer as well. They travel to the place of Fouquet's last sighting escorted by Longville. Kirke, Tabitha, and Sado enter an empty house where Tabitha discovers the hidden staff of destruction. Fouquet's golem appears outside. Louise tries to fight the golem with some spells but fails. As she is about to be crushed, Sado rushes in to save her. Her confidence broken, Louise breaks into tears. Sado is moved by this and attacks the golem himself as Silphid rescues the nobles. He uses Kirch's sword, but it breaks on contact with the golem. Durflinger calls on Sado to use him. Sado draws Durflinger and the runes on his hands glow again. He is able to slash the golem's legs, but they reform themselves. Louise tries to help using the Staff of Destruction, which Sado recognizes as a M72 rocket launcher, and with his rune-enabled abilities, he fires it at the golem and destroys it. In the aftermath, Longville claims the staff and reveals herself to have been Fouquet all along. She engineered the scenario to discover how to use the staff. She tries to kill the students with the staff but nothing happens, as rocket launchers are single-use weapons. Sado knocks Fouquet out. Later, Osmond reveals that 30 years previously, he was fighting a monster when a man from another world, an American soldier from the Vietnam War, used one of two staffs to save his life. After the man died, Osmond buried the man and kept the remaining staff. The school later holds a ball to celebrate, where Louise asks Sado to dance with her and thanks him for saving her. Henrietta congratulates Louise for capturing Fouquet. She offers her hand to Sado, but Sado misunderstood and kisses her on the lips. Henrietta asks Louise and Sado to work undercover to determine if nobles are taking advantage of the commoners. Louise naively loses all of their money in a casino where she was hoping to increase their funds. Refusing to ask Henrietta for more money, Sado and Louise find work at a tavern called Charming Fairy Inn, run by Scarim and his daughter, Jessica. Louise works as a waitress and Sado works as a dishwasher where he is in close contact with Jessica, much to Louise's displeasure. Scarin holds a contest for the waitresses. Whoever gets the most tips gets a large reward, plus the chance to wear a special maid outfit. Louise is unable to earn any tips because of her temper until an arrogant noble enters the bar. After bringing him to justice, the noble runs off, but leads a large bride for Louise. The tip enables Louise to win the contest. Even though she and Sado now have to leave Louise wears a special maid outfit just for him. It's summer vacation and many students are traveling back to their families. Kirch goes along with Tabitha to her home. As a result, Louise and Sado are alone for once. Kirch learns that Tabitha's real name is Charlotte, Princess of Gallia, and that she has a tragic past in which her mother drank a potion that drove her insane. Her reason for returning home is revealed to be a mission from her uncle, the King of Gallia. Meanwhile, Montmorency is upset that Gucci has been flirting with other girls, makes Aphrodisiac, a kind of love potion, and tries to slip it into Gucci's drink. Sado finds a large cooking pot that was about to be thrown away and fashions it into a hot tub later at night, similar to those in Japan. While Sado relaxes in the tub, Siesta passes by and joins him, much to his embarrassment. Louise sees the two together and becomes so frustrated that she interrupts Gitch and Montmorency and accidentally consumes the drink with the love potion in it. When Sado returns to her room, Louise gets flustered and falls completely in love with him. Louise continues her lovey-dovey behavior towards Sado, which freaks him out, as well as causes a misunderstanding with Siesta. In desperation, Sado demands that Montmorency create an antidote, but she refuses to help until he threatens to blackmail her into helping. Sado learned from Siesta that emotion-changing potions are illegal. Since the antidote requires the tear of a water elemental, Montmorency and Gucci lead Sado, and the love struck Louise to Lagdorian Lake where they make contact with the water spirit who is flooding the land so that she can search for her stolen precious treasure, but she is being hindered by magic users. Sado volunteers to deal with them and he and Gucci fight the intruders who turn out to be Kirk and Tabitha. Sado promises to find whatever the water spirit has lost. The spirit trusts his word as Gandalfur and gives him the antidote. Having taken care of the love potion, Louise and Sado receive a new mission. In order to strengthen her country's alliance, Princess Henrietta is to be wed to the Emperor of Germania. 
Louis Sensato must recover an indiscreet letter that Henrietta wrote to Prince Wales of Albion, or the wedding will be cancelled. The princess is unable to see the prince in person, because Albion is in a state of civil war. Gucci overhears the conversation and volunteers to aid the princess and Henrietta accepts, much to Louise and Sato's surprise. Before leaving, Sato learns about Gandalfur and legendary void magic from Colbert, as well as a story of two dragons. On the day of departure, their escort, Wards, captain of the Griffin Squadron, arrives. It turns out he is also Louise's fiancé, and Sato grows jealous of him. Later, Durflinger talks to Sato about Gandalfur and how only a Gandalfur can wield Durflinger. Wards proposes to Louise then, at dinner, asks Sato to spar with him. Wards wins easily and mocks Sato's promise to protect Louise, leaving Sato depressed. That evening, Louise and Wards board the ship after convincing her that the Gooch and Sato have returned home. He persists in his courtship, and Louise accepts his proposal. In truth, the boys have been delayed by the sudden appearance of Fouquet and her golem. They are saved by Kirk and Tabitha, who showed up on Silphet. Sato figures out that Wards and Fouquet were working together, and Louise is in trouble. Wards and Louise arrive in Albion, the floating continent, where they meet with Prince Wales. Louise delivers the letter. Then Wales gives a reply letter to her that she is meant to retrieve and learns of the power behind the uprising of nobles in Albion, the Reconquista. Their mission supposedly completed, Wards insists that they get married in Albion. He reveals himself as a member of the Reconquista and is a threat to Wales. Louise tries to refuse, but one of Wards' allies, Cromwell, arrives with the water spirit's stolen ring and forces her to consent using mind control. The marriage proceeds with Wales officiating and is nearly complete when Sado bursts into the church and snaps Louise out of her trance. The marriage ceremony is ruined, Wards kills Wales, steals the letter from Louise, and tries to kill Sado. However, Wards' treatment of Louise angers Sado, and he is able to unlock his abilities as Gandalfur and fully utilize Darflinger. He defeats Wards' magic who flees but not before bringing the church down on Louise and Sado. The two of them are rescued by Tabitha and the others, and Silphid flies everyone home. Sado, holding Louise in his arms, kisses her. Louise informs Henrietta of Wales' death, and the princess' wedding is cancelled. Louise also warns Osmond about the Reconquista. Osmond then tells her about Void Magic and Gandalfur. After another argument with Louise, Sado accompanies Siesta to her home village of Talbis to find a dragon. Louise and others follow them, and they locate the rare dragon, which Siesta's family has kept as an heirloom. Sato finds a tombstone with a Japanese epitaph on it. The dragon turns out to be an A6M0 fighter, a Japanese aircraft. It is revealed that Siesta's great-grandfather was an IJN pilot from World War II, and that he was magically transported to Halkikinya, just as Sato was. Colbert explains that two dragons had flown during a solar eclipse, but one disappeared. He suggests that the timing of the second pilot, Siesta's great-grandfather, was off and that the solar eclipse ended before the second pilot was able to fly through the portal. Sato concludes that the other pilot returned home, and this is his chance to return home as well. As they bring the plane back to school, Albion declares war on Tristane, wanting to use the country as a base from which they can conquer the rest of the continent and plan to launch their attack in three days during the next solar eclipse. Sato tells Luis that he wants to return home during the upcoming solar eclipse, and he gets angry when she acts as if she doesn't care. A war between Albion and Tristane is deemed inevitable. Henrietta assembles a military force that conscripts the boys from the academy. Louise walks in on a sleeping Sato whereupon she says goodbye. The next morning, Sato wakes to find a letter in which Louise has written, You're fired. Just go wherever you want. Louise decides to join the princess in the war. Sato gets in his zero fighter, while Henrietta advances with the Tristane military to intercept the invading Albion force at the village of Talves. Instead of flying straight into the eclipse, Sato attacks Albion's dragon squadrons, who are unable to keep up with the plane's speed. Sato runs out of bullets and is attacked by wards on a wind dragon. Louise jumps from Silphid to Sato's plane. Tabitha, Kirk, and Gitch together break down Fouquet's golem, and Fouquet flees for good. At the thought of Sato being harmed, 
Louise finally makes a connection with Sado and unlocks her void magic for the first time, casting a powerful spell known as Explosion, which destroys the entirety of Albion's aerial force, including wards. After the battle, with the solar eclipse passed and the Zero Fighter nearly destroyed, Sado and Louis sit by the plane's wreckage, where they have an argument once again and end up kissing. Elsewhere, Cromwell tries to hypnotize Kirk and Tabitha with the Ring of Andavari, but Gucci knocks him unconscious. Later, the four aristocrats are awarded medals by Henrietta, and Tabitha is given the Water Spirit's Ring to fulfill the promise to return it. Louise is so excited about her medal that she rushes to show it to Sado only to find him chatting with Siesta. In a typical fashion, Louise overreacts and punishes Sado, 